my name's Shade and today I'm going to be discussing all of the books that I read in December. I read three novels in December as well as a poetry book again just like the Amanda Lovelace situation it's not a collection I don't know what else to call it other than a poetry book I took a lot of December off reading so this has easily been the month where I read the least first book I finished this month was A Court of Silver Frames by Sarah J Mass the most recent addition to the A Court of Thorns and Roses series this one has a slightly different tone and I think it's the most adult of I think all of the novels of hers that I've ever read. The End of Throne of Glass, which is what I read first, was kind of like, okay, we're, we're definitely in new adult territory here. And then we had Akamath and Akawar and Akafas. It was like, okay, this is, this is adult. This is just adult. It just is. And then we had Crescent City, which is like, okay, yeah, adult. And then we have this one, which is like above it all. It's by far the most graphic. And like I was expecting graphic smart, but like it's the most graphic. I think it's the strongest of the Akatar novels. I don't know if it's my favourite. I wrote my Goodreads review that it might be. But like, Akamath was a lot of fun too. I didn't really click with the Akatar novels as much and it really saddened me because I love Sarah's books. And I love the characters. But there's something about them. They're really character based. Which isn't a problem. House of Earth and Blood was character based but the plot didn't suffer. The world didn't suffer. I still felt really secured in the plot and the world and I think these ones it does suffer a little bit. The world I didn't really learn too too much more in this one. There are definitely some things being set up. There's a character that's mentioned in the end of Aka War and they reappear in this one. There's more to come from them I think. A bigger threat to come and we're dealing with other magical artifacts that we didn't know about in the past and I think there's more to come from them. I mean there is come is, is hinted that there's more to come from them. Like I don't know what I want. I just remember feeling really underwhelmed in the first ones and I kind of felt that a little bit here too. I loved Nessa's journey. I loved the character work. I think that's definitely the strongest part of this book. I loved everything with the Valkyries and the training and the friendship. I loved watching her relationship with Cassian. Did miss our other characters. I was expecting them to be around a lot more. Like I know that our characters are kind of separated in this one. But we could have seen Cassian chilling with his friends a few times, couldn't we? And everyone just felt very different now that we're not in Feyre's head. I've seen lots of people saying like bad things about Reese in particular. About how he, he's almost tannin like a little bit. And I saw it too. I don't know if I'd go so far as to say that he's tannin like. But I, I saw it. It made me uncomfortable. <laughs> But then also we know what he's been through and we know how he feels about Nessa and we're literally in Nessa's perspective. How they could all just like leave her and forget about her. I don't, like they forget that she went through trauma too. I just, I don't understand how they even got to the position they were in in the beginning of this book. Why was no one looking after her? Why did we let it go on for so long? I do think it moved a little slower than it needed to. The plot just really takes a backseat to Nesta's story. I understand why it does and I'm not saying that it shouldn't and I think Nesta deserves her story to be pushed to the front. But then what's the point of having this big plot and I feel like some things came together quite quickly in the end. Although I did really love part four. I remember how it been a grand old time I was sobbing by the end even though I knew what happens in the end. When Reese said, Feyre darling, I just broke. <laughs> oh, and we also had some more mentions of like this Sarah J Vass multiverse situation and I, I'm seeing potential ways they could tie it together and I'm here for it. I'm excited for it. I want it to happen so badly. <laughs> really excited to see what happens with this in terms of the plot because like I said, we did get some breadcrumbs of things seem to be leading to something bigger that I am excited for. I'm definitely intrigued by it. I do like this world and I love these characters and it's so annoying that I just, I don't know what it is why I don't click with them so well. I think it's probably, it's either tied with Akamath or it's just above Akamath for me. It probably is above Akamath. I do think it's the strongest. I want to know more about Azriel. That's the only other thing I'll say. He's probably my favourite of the bad boys. I love all of them, but I want more Azriel. I want to know what he's hiding. He's very secretive. I'm wondering if the next book's also going to be following Casta. Casta. <laughs> Nesta and Cassian. If we're going to follow someone else. I kind of feel like a lot of their story has happened maybe. I want it to be like multiple POVs. I want to jump around from all of them like we did in Throne of Glass. Yeah I think that's all I have to say. I would give it 
8.5 I think I don't know I'm gonna stop talking about it now I have torn opinions as you can tell next I read in a holidays by Christina Lauren this is my first Christina Lauren read I read it for the holidays I listened to the audiobook and I think the audiobook was really good I think the narrator's voice was excellent for the role it kind of almost felt like watching a movie at times I enjoyed it it was a cute fluffy read I had a couple problems with it though like there were some characters that really bugged me and I don't feel like we resolved their problems and also the like the main love interest annoyed me at times and like I didn't fully understand what was happening with their relationship when it came to the like the big conflict point I think I had a couple qualms with the premise as well so this is kind of like a Groundhog Day type situation. Our main character May spends Christmas in a cabin with her parents and her parents friends and they've done this since they were little kids this is what they do every Christmas and this year they find out that the owners of the cabin her parents friends are gonna sell it and that this was their last Christmas there and on the way to the airport she gets in a car crash and wakes up in the airplane going to the holiday cabin she has a crush on one of the sons of her friend's parents like almost like a cousin kind of figure almost not actually obviously and the night before the car crash she kissed his younger brother drunkenly didn't mean anything by it I enjoyed the family aspect of it a lot that's probably one of my favorite aspects but like I said I was really into the love interest and I was really vibing with the story and then we got to a point if you've read it, it's when they're like shopping, they're doing like the hunt thing. From then on, it just kind of felt off to me and I couldn't really put my finger on what it was. Yeah, like a, a 6.57 out of 10 maybe. Next, I read Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I actually read this with the intention to watch the film over Christmas and I didn't watch the film yet, so I gotta get on that. I, I read this because I wanted to watch a film, also it was like a classic and I hadn't read a classic in a while and it seems like one of the easier classics to read because it is technically a kid's book. I owned it, not this edition, oh, I owned a different edition which was actually kind of gross and like rotting and so I got a, a prettier edition which is really nice and it felt kind of Christmassy. I expected to not enjoy it, I expected for it to be quite dry. This could have been said in a lot less words, a lot less it, and it's, it's a product of its time, I know, it's a product of its time but also genre because I've read books that are written in around this time period that are a lot more concise. <laughs> so it's, it's both its time, it's the place that it's from, it's from New England. It was published in the 1860s, it takes place in and around the Civil War but it takes place over a really long period of time and also the fact that it's a kids book I could tell that it was a kids book like the way it was written like just more words were used than that had to be used and so I think that's one of my biggest problems with it it was hard to keep up momentum for it and there were definitely times where it felt like a chore to get through I audiobooked this one as well actually and if there is like a dusty old classic that you want to read but you think you're gonna really struggle through Audiobook is the way to go. So thank god I audiobooked it. I don't think I would have managed if I hadn't audiobooked it to be honest. But I was surprised. I did enjoy the characters and their overall story. I was invested in what happened in it and I was quite charmed by it in a lot of ways. I really enjoyed like the feministy flares that come up and I think it was funny at times. So I did enjoy it and I am glad to have read it. I just wished it was shorter. <laughs> just wish it was shorter. I'd give it I don't know, like a 7-ish out of 10 I think as far as classics go, it's not the worst, it's not the best, but it's also not the worst. And then lastly is the poetry book which is Water Runs Red by Jenna Clare. I haven't been following her for too too long, I feel like I dip in and out of her videos. This year in particular was the year that I, I went back and rewatched a load of them, so I got her poetry collection. I've been trying to read more poetry and I think of the collections I've read, which is not a lot, other than like the random ones I read for school, it's probably my favourite. I I loved the multimedia aspect of it, like there's photography and little doodles. So there were a few times I was like, I don't understand how this relates, why this is here. But then there were times where it really worked well. I just think it's a really beautiful book, if nothing else. As you can see, there were a decent amount of poems in here that I really enjoyed. It really spoke to me. I loved the witch metaphor in particular, and I loved learning more about like Jenna's story. I feel like there's something that is a common thing with this style of poetry. It's about the trauma that the poet has gone through and the hurt the poet has gone through. The storylines kind of weave themselves together. You're never following one singular one. You kind of are in the beginning, and then after a while, we 
kind of focus on different things as well. There were times where I didn't feel like the transition from one theme to the next was the smoothest. There were some like political type ones that like jumped out at me. And Jenna herself talks about how like romantic love interests and, and sexual trauma and, and those kind of themes don't really speak to her. So she wanted to write something that was different and something about friendship and I love that idea. I definitely need someone that thinks that friendships can be just as important as romantic relationships and family relationships even. I loved learning more about her. I just wasn't obsessed with it. Like I don't know if it's just like poetry isn't for me or I just haven't found the one yet. But I can't say it's like the, the best thing since sliced bread but I really enjoyed it. I think it's my favourite of the poetry ones I've read so far. Yeah. I think solid 8 out of 10, maybe? I don't know, I might change my mind later. <laughs> and those were the four books that I read in December. Hopefully I get this video up rather soon because as of filming it, it's already first week of January, so I am behind with my wrap-ups. And after this one will be coming my overall 2020 one, 2021 favourites and statistics and goals and books I'm excited for for 2022 so keep your eyes out for that if you're interested. I if you want to talk about any of these books I would love to hear your opinions in the comments down below. Other than that that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Jade. I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening slash night. My name's Jade. I did my outro wrong. Thank you for watching. I hope I see you next time. Goodbye!